All right, in this video, we're going to be talking about section 7.3 dealing with algebra tiles. Um, already in the last section, we did talk about uh, equations and uh, various types of equations. Now we can represent equations visually through the use of algebra tiles, which is what this section is all about. We're going to start off with something how we can represent algebra tiles for linear equations in one variable. Now, a linear equation with one variable is an equation that involves one variable, such as the letter X. It could be N, it could be M, it could be P or Q or X, Y, Z, just so as long as the exponent has a one. If that exponent is an understood one, then it is a linear equation. And we usually solve an equation by transforming an equation into a simpler one that we already know how to solve. And also a linear equation may have one solution, it may have infinitely many solutions, or it may have no solutions. Okay. Now this slide just deals with uh, expectations of students when they're solving linear equations with uh, one variable. They should be able to uh, give an example of a linear equation with one solution or infinitely many solution or no solutions and show which of the three possibilities is the case by successfully transforming the given equation into simpler forms until an equivalent equation of the form x equals a, a equals a or a equals b give results where a and b are gonna be different numbers. All right, now one and two step equations are the two simplest types of linear equations in one variable, like on this next slide that you see here. When you have one step equations such as 2x is equal to 12, that involves only one operation to solve for x, either addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division, like 2x is equal to 12. This is a multiplication equation because we're taking the value of x multiplying it by 2 to get 12. So to undo that, we need to take the opposite of multiplication, which is division, and that is we divide both sides of that linear equation by two. And that would give us X is equal to six. Now for a two-step equation, this involves two inverse operations to solve for X. So like an equation like negative four X plus two is equal to eight. We're taking the value of X, multiplying it by negative four, adding two, to it to get eight. So here we subtract two on both sides. With that, we undo either addition or subtraction first. So we're subtracting two on both sides of this equation to end up with negative four X is equal to six. And then finally, we divide both sides by negative four. We undo either multiplication or division next. In this case, it's a multiplication. We undo multiplication by dividing both sides by negative four. That would mean x is equal to six over negative four. And if we write that as a uh, mixed number, it will be x equals negative one and one half. Okay. Now here we used symbolic algebra for solving one and two step equations. In this section, we're going to develop skills needed to help your students visualize and solve linear equations using manipulatives called algebra tiles. Okay. Now, if we were in class, then I would, would have shown you how to use the algebra tiles by hand to solve linear equations like these. So here we're gonna model whole number expressions using algebra tiles. Now the algebra tiles that you see here are gonna be suitable for solving equations that are restricted to whole numbers. So in this case here, this rectangular tile that you see here, we're gonna call that the N tile because that represents the variable, okay? 
the n tile could be an x could be represent a variable like x or y or m in an n or whatever. The square tile that you see here represents the one tile that represents one unit. Okay. So here how we can uh, represent various expressions using algebra tiles. And that's on this next slide that you see here, example 26. Here we we'll want to represent each algebra tile model with an algebraic expression. So here in part A, we got one, two, three, one tiles that represents the number three. Part B, here we get two rectangular tiles. Those are your N tiles. Those two N tiles represent two N. And then part C, notice that we get two N tiles and one one tile. That's going to be two N plus a one tile, two N plus one. And then part D, notice we got three N tiles that represents three N and then two one tiles, that's the plus two. So this represents the expression three N plus two. Okay. Now here we want to use algebra tiles to model each expression like in part A. 3n plus 1. So the 3n means we need 3n tiles and 1, 1 tile. That's 3n plus 1. Part B, 5n plus 6. Well, that 5n means I need 5n tiles like this and 6 of these square 1 tiles. So this is the representation of 5n plus 6. Part C, 2n plus 5. Well, for the 2n, I'm going to need 2n tiles, as you see. The plus 5 means I need 5 um, 1 tiles. So all of this represents 2n plus 5. Now, part D, 2 times the quantity n plus three. Notice n plus three is in parentheses. So let's represent the n plus three first. n plus three means I need one, one n tile and three one tiles. The two on the outside of the parentheses tells me I need two sets of n plus three tiles. So this represents two sets of n plus three. Now, if you were to use the distributed property, then this is what you'll do. Two times n will be two n, and then two times three will be six. So here, this represents actually two n for the two n tiles plus six for the six one tiles. And now part E, three times the quantity three n plus four. Let's represent 3n plus 4 first. That's 3n tiles and 4 1 tiles for the 3n plus 4. This 3 on the outside tells me I need 3 sets of 3n plus 4 tiles, which is what I have here. Again, you can use a distributed property by doing 3 times 3n, that's 9n. And then three times the plus four would be plus four. That would be nine n plus 12, which is represented here. They should have nine n, tile, n tiles and 12 one tiles. Okay, now we're gonna solve whole number equations with algebra tiles. The concept of equality is central to algebraic thinking. We split a rectangular mat in two halves. Each half of the mat represents one side of the equation. So 
So here the tall mat here that you see represents a two-step equation, 2n plus 1 equaling to 7. So the left mat, the left side of this mat, represents 2n plus 1. That's 2n tiles and 1, 1 tile for 2n plus 1. The right side of the mat represents 7. So here you see 7 square 1 tiles for the number 7. Okay. Next, we'll look at this. We can apply the one-step procedures to solve the two-step equation 2n plus 1 with algebra tiles. So in this case, when I slide down here, you'll see that particular representation of 2n plus 3 is equal to 11. So we sketch the algebra tiles and write the corresponding equation. So here you can see 2n plus 3 rep equals 11 is represented by this. On the left side, you got 2n two in, two in tiles and 3 1 tiles. The right side is just simply 11 1 tiles for the number 11. And if we want to solve this, look at the next line here. Notice that they X'd out three of the one tiles on each side of this mat. In other words, if I take away three tiles, three one tiles here, I must take away three one tiles here on the right side. That represents two n plus three minus three is equal to 11 minus three. That's how we balance each side of this uh, rectangular mat. So on this next line, you'll see when we take away three one tiles, you're going to be left with two n tiles or just two n equaling to eight one tiles on the right side. That's eight. Now in the next line, they split this into groups of two. Okay. We want eight tiles to be split in groups of two because we get two n tiles. So we got split this in groups of two. So eight split in groups of two means you're gonna have four tiles in each group. So here, that means one n or just n would be equal to four n tiles, four one tiles. So n is equal to four. And if we wanna check, you can do this. Replace the n with four, so that'll be two times four, which is eight, and then eight plus three does give us 11. So that answer checks, and the solution for this two-step equation would be n is equal to four. Right, let's look at uh, how we can write the equation represented by the tile model. This is problem number one on page 403 in your text. And this is part A and B. Let's start with part A. On the left side, I have two n tiles and three one tiles. That's 2n plus 3. And this is equal to, notice on the right side, I only got one n tile and seven one tiles. That's n plus 7. So that represents 2n plus 3 equals to n plus 7. And now part B. On this map, on the left side, we got two n tiles. That represents two n. And one, two, three, four, five, six uh, one tiles. So the equation for that representation of that tile model will be two n plus six. Okay. Now let's look at problem number two on page 403. Here we want to represent each equation with a tile model. In this case here, we've got three n plus one is equal to n plus five. And in part B, two n plus one is equal to seven. All right, let's see how we can represent part A, three n plus one is equal to n plus five. Let's represent it like this. And in this case here, we got three n tiles, that's three n. 
and we add one one tau for the plus one. So that's three n plus one on the left side. Then we get equal to for the vertical line n. There's only one n tau for that. And then plus five will be five one tiles. So this represents the equation. 3n plus 1 is equal to n plus 5. Now, part b, 2n plus 1 is equal to 7, looks like this. Here we got 2n tiles, that's 2n, and then plus 1, 1 tile, 1, 1 tile for that. On the right side of the map, we have 7 1 tiles. So here, that's 2n plus 1 equal to seven. All right, next we're gonna use algebra tiles to solve the following equations here. In part A, we got two n plus five is equal to nine. Part B, three n plus two is equal to 14. Part uh, C, four n plus one equals 13. So let's start with part A. Here we got 2n plus 5 is equal to 9. To represent that using algebra tiles, it would be this. 2n tiles and 5 1 tiles. Looks like this. The right side of the map would be 9 1 tiles for the number 9. And then next, we want to get those 2n tiles by itself. We got five n tiles. We need to get rid of those by x and our five n tiles. That represents the two n plus five minus five. The right side, well, if we're going to get rid of five one tiles, we must also get rid of five one tiles on the right side. That represents the nine minus five. This represents the fact that we're subtracting five on both sides of this equation. Then next, we'll have this. We get rid of those five one tiles, you'll be left with two n tiles on the left side. Get rid of the five one tiles on the right side, you'll be left with four one tiles. So that's the equation, two n equals to four. And then next we're going to divide by two. So here we need to split these four n tiles evenly into two groups. And as you can see here, for every one n tile, you will have two one tiles. So that represents the fact that n equals to two, which is the solution to that uh, linear equation. Okay. All right, now let's look at uh, part B. All right, in part B, we got uh, 3n plus 2 is equal to 14. So the representation of that would be this. We got 3n tiles and two 1 tiles. That's 3n plus 2. On the right side, we got 14. For 14, we have to represent that with 14 1 tiles, as you can see here. That's the equation. And then next, to get the three n tiles by itself, we need to take away two of the one tiles, but just those two one tiles on the left. When that happens, we have to get rid of two one tiles on the right side as well to make the whole thing balance out. So this is three n plus two minus two equals to 14 minus two. That's what this represents. And then next, if we get rid of the two one tiles, you are left with three n tiles on the left side. Get rid of the two one tiles on the right side, you'll be left with 12 one tiles. So this represents three n equals 12. And then next we're going to divide both sides by three because we got three n tiles, we need to divide 12 n tiles equally in groups of three. 
And in this case here, we have to say for every one n tile, there will be four one tiles. That's n equals to four, okay? So that's how you solve that equation using algebra tiles, okay? Now I'm gonna go back to this screen right here for part C. Which is four N plus one is equal to 13. Now we wanna solve this equation using algebra tiles or represent this model. Four N means four N tiles plus one, only one, one tile. That's four N plus one. The vertical line is the equal sign. 13 means I need 13 one tiles here, as you can see. And then next I'm going to cross out one of the one tiles on the left side. If I do that, I need to do the same thing on the right side, cross out one one tile on the right side to balance this out. That represents four n plus one minus one equal 13 plus 13 minus one. I'm subtracting one on each side of the equation. So in this case, I'll be left with four n tiles on the left side and 12 one tiles on the right side. 4n is equal to 12. Now, I have to divide both sides of the equation by four. That means those 12 one, one tiles have to be grouped. We have to be separated in groups of four, as you can see. And each grouping has three one tiles. So here, that means n, the one n tile equals three one tiles, n is equal to three. Okay. Now let's see if we can model integer expressions with uh, algebra tiles. That's gonna be the next thing we'll talk about here. Now we can use algebra tiles to solve equations such as three n plus five equals n minus one. Like the chip model for integers, we need two colors to distinguish positive and negative integers. Sometimes, you know, with chips, you could use a green chip for positive or a, and a red chip for a negative, for positive and negative integers. <clears throat> but for this case, we're gonna let white be the positive and the black be negative for the n and the one, n tile and the one tile, okay? The white n tile is positive, as you can see. The black n tile represents the negative n. The white square represents the one tile. The black square represents the negative one. Okay. All right, now zero pairs represent uh, representations of the number zero. And as you can see here, if I have an n tile and a negative n tile, that's a zero pair because I'm letting the white be the positive n and the black rectangle be the negative n. That those two form a zero pair. The white square is positive one, the black square is negative one. Put those two together, you will form a zero pair, okay? So there are multiple representations of zero in the tile model, much like the chip model or the charged field model for integers. Of course, the chip model, you could use a green for positive and a red for negative. Put those two together, you'll form a zero pair. The charged field model, usually a plus sign represents positive charge. The minus sign represents a negative charge. A positive and a negative charge form a zero pair. So if we look at the next slide, here's example 34 in your textbook where we can sketch the tile model for each algebraic expression. So in part A, we got 2n minus three. We can write 2n minus three as 2n plus negative three by adding the opposite and then come up with a model for that. 
Two n represents two positive n tiles. The negative three represents three negative one tiles, as you can see. Keep in mind the negative one is represented by the black uh, square. Each black square is negative one. And in part B, negative four n minus five. We can write that as negative four n plus negative five by adding the opposite and come up with a uh, representation of that. So negative four n would be four black rectangular n tiles. And then negative five would be four, I mean five black square one tile. This will be your representation of negative four n minus five. All right, on the next slide. This is problem number four on page 403. Let's say I want to use algebra tiles to represent each expression. So in this case here, if I want to represent 3n minus 1, this is part A, it would be this. Now, 3n minus 1 can be represented as 3n plus negative 1. 3n plus negative 1. So that 3n would be three white n tiles. A negative 1 would be one black one tile. So that's 3n minus 1. Part B, negative 3n minus 2. It would look like this. In this case, the negative 3n minus 2, I can write that as negative 3n plus negative 2. And then the negative 3n means I need three black rectangular n tiles for negative 3n and two black one tiles for negative 2. And then part C, 4 minus n. So for the four minus n, I can write that as four plus negative n, okay? The four is just four white one tiles. And the negative n will be a black, it has to be black, so it has to be one black n tile. That's how we represent four minus n. All right, now problem number three on page 403, we wanna write an equation representing the, represented by the tile model. So in part A, we got this. We got two white uh, n tiles for two n and two black one tiles for minus two. That's two n minus two. And then that's gonna be equal to, here we got one black uh, n tile for negative n and seven black one tiles, no, eight, I'm sorry, eight black one tiles for negative eight. Okay, so this should be negative N minus eight. Okay, should be negative N minus Eight. Okay, negative n minus eight. Now part B, now for part B, notice we got this. Three, no, four black n tiles for uh, negative four n and six black, um, six white one tiles, that's plus six. So that's negative four N plus six. Negative four N plus six. And on the right side, one white uh, N tile, that's N, and then four black uh, one tiles, that's negative four. Okay. All right, 
So let's say we represent uh, by the equation represented by that particular tile model. Okay, sorry about that. All right, now let's look at problem number five on page 403, where we're going to use algebra tiles to represent each equation. Like in this one, one minus n is equal to two n minus five. One minus n is equal to two n minus five. So here's the representation of that using algebra tiles. I can write so one minus n is one plus negative n, and that's equal to two n plus negative five. That minus five is written as plus negative five. So one plus negative n means I need one white, uh, one tile. The negative n, I need one black n tile for negative n. So this is one minus n. And then for the two n minus five, I need two white n tiles for that plus negative five or minus five means I need five black uh, one tiles for, to represent that. So that's how we represent the equation. One minus N is equal to two N minus five. All right, next uh, part B, two times the quantity one minus N is equal to five N plus seven. Here's how we represent that. Now notice in the parentheses, one minus n, I can write that as one plus negative n and represent that using algebra tiles. That one means I need a one white, one tile, and for negative n, one black negative n tile. But that two on the outside means I need two sets of this. So this is why you see two sets of one plus negative n tiles here and here. That represents two minus two n in reality. The right side, five n plus seven, five white n tiles. And the plus seven means I need seven white one tiles. So that's how we represent two times the quantity. One minus n is equal to five n plus seven. Let's say we want to solve energy equations using algebra tiles. We'll just briefly talk about that. The tile model for solving one and two step equations with energy mimics the model for one and two step equations with whole numbers. So we use the tile model to solve a multi step equation involving integers. The next step, the next example, relates the symbolic approach to solving an equation and the corresponding actions in the tile model. So let's look at that situation here. The first step is this. You have two white n tiles and one black one tile. That's two n minus one. This represents your equal sign. The black uh, n tile, there's only one that's negative n and seven black one tiles. That's negative, that's minus seven. So that's the equation two n minus one is equal to negative n minus seven. Now this is where the zero pairs comes in. I wanna get n on one side of the equation, get the variable on one side, preferably on the left-hand side. So this is what they did. They added one white n tile on the right side and one white n tile on the left side. What's gonna happen here is this will form a zero pair, as you're gonna see right here in step number three. A black n tile and a white n tile put together form a zero pair. And besides, step number two shows that we're adding n to both sides 
of this equation. The 2n minus 1 plus n equals negative n plus negative n minus 7 plus n. And that step three shows a zero pair. When you get rid of the zero pair, you're left with, on the left side, you got three n tiles for three n and a one black tile for negative one, three n minus one. That's equal to, and all you'll have left is seven black n tiles for my negative seven. So you got three n minus one equals negative seven. Then the next step is to get this three n tile those three n tiles by themselves. To get rid of a negative one tile, we need to add a positive one tile to the left side and to the right side, as you can see. So we got three n minus one plus one equal negative seven plus one. Now on the next slide, you're gonna see this, uh, this continues on the next slide. A negative one and a positive one form a zero pair. Same thing here, negative one and a positive one form a zero pair as well. You get rid of those, you're gonna be left with only three n tiles, which is three n. And on the right side, you're gonna be left with six black one tiles. That's negative six. Okay, now in step number six, they divide it by three because we want to take those six negative one tiles, split them evenly into groups of three. And to do that, each group will have two negative one tiles. So for every one tile that's in, you're gonna have negative two in tile, I mean negative two one tiles. Well, two negative one tiles, so in, would be negative two as the solution to that linear equation. Okay, take a look at this one. This map represents, well, and this one split up into five parts. Each one represents steps in solving a multi-step algebraic equation. Here we want to write the corresponding equation for each map to determine the solution and then check your answer, okay? So let's take a look at this one. This is part A of problem number nine. Here we've got three different, well, three white end tiles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven one tiles. That's three in plus seven. Now, as you can see on the right side, there are four end tiles, four in, and four positive one tiles plus four. So we got the equation 3n plus 7 is equal to 4n plus 4. Now, let's look at part B on this next slide. You will see that 3n tiles were X'd out on both the left side and the right side of this mat. So that represents 3n minus 3n plus 7 equaling the 4n minus 3n plus 4. That's the representation of subtracting 3n on both sides of this equation. Now on to part C. When you take away those 3n tiles on each side, this is what you'll be left with. 7 1 tiles, that's 7, equaling to four, I mean n, one n tile, that's your n, plus four, one tile. So that seven is equal to n plus four. And then part D. Notice they X'd out four n tiles on the left and on the right side because they want this n tile by itself. So if you subtract four n tiles here, you must subtract four n tiles there. That represents seven minus four, equaling to n plus four minus four. And then finally, you have only one n tile on the right side and three one tiles on the left. So that's three equaling to n. And three equals n or n equals three 
represent the solution to that linear equation in problem number nine. Now here in example 37, we got this. We want to solve this equation three times the quantity 2n minus 1 equals 2n plus 9 using algebra. Relate the symbolic action to the tile model and check your solution. So in this case here, in step number one, that's the original equation that we start off with. So with a title representation, you want to represent the equation with algebra tiles by placing three groups of two n tiles and one negative one tile on the left side of the net, because that's two n minus one. Two n tiles and one negative one tile, three groups of it because of the three on the outside. On the right side, two n tiles and nine one tile. Two n tiles and nine one tiles. Step number two. In this case, there are six n tiles and three negative one tiles on the left side. They did the distributive property by doing three times two n, which is six n, and then three times minus one would be minus three. And of course, there are two n tiles and one nine, nine tiles on the right side. You still have the two n plus nine. Now in step number three, they subtracted, no, they added three on both sides. They added three one tiles to both sides of the mat. So here they're adding three to both sides of this linear equation. Then in step number four, you would remove zero pairs and combine like terms. Negative three tiles and plus three tiles leaves you a zero pair. You're left with six in equaling the 2n, and then add 9 plus 3, you'll get 12. 2n plus 12 equals 6n. But then you want to subtract two, tiles, two n tiles from each side. That's where the 6n minus 2n equals 2n plus 12 minus 2n comes from. And when you simplify that, 2n from 6n leaves you with 4n. So you're left with 4n tiles, then that's equal to 12 one tiles. Then we're going to divide each side into groups of four. So we divide both sides by four. And then you're left with n is equal to three, meaning one n tile will equal three one tiles. And then this represents a check. This part represents the left side of the equation, where you got three times two x minus one in parentheses, substitute the x with three. So you got three times the quantity, two times three minus one. If you multiply three times two, you'll get six. So six minus one would give you five, but then you got the three on the outside, three times five will be 15. And then the right side was at two n plus nine. N is three, so two times three gives us six. Six plus that nine will give you 15. So the solution for that linear equation would be N is equal to three. All right, problem number 29 on page uh, 405 is this. Let's say we want to use algebra tiles to solve this equation, five N plus two equals 3n plus 8. And we want to show the corresponding algebraic representation of that. And it looks like this. That 5n plus 2 equal to 3n plus 8 looks like this. For the 5n plus 2, we need 5n tiles and 2 1 tiles. For the 3n plus 8, you'll need 3n tiles and 8 1 tiles. For that. Then the next thing we do here is we cross out three of the n tiles on the left side and all three n tiles on the right side. You want to get n by on one side of this equation. So that's why we subtract three n on both sides. 
but 5n minus 3n plus 2 is equal to 3n minus 3n plus 8. And then next, you'll be left with this. When you get rid of those three n tiles on each side, you'll be left with two n tiles on the left and two one tiles on the right. That's two n plus two. And that's equal to, you'll be left with only eight n, eight one tiles on the right side of this, of this map. So it'll be two n plus two is equal to eight. Now we're ready to subtract those two n tiles on the left side. If we do that, we need to cross out two of those n tiles on the right side. So that represents two n plus two minus two is equal to eight minus two. Get rid of those one, those two one tiles, you'll get two n tiles on the left side, that's two n. Get rid of the two n tiles on the right side, you'll be left with six one tiles. So that's two n equals six. Divide by two, meaning that those six n, those six one tiles must be placed in groups of two. So each group will have to have three one tiles. So for one n tile, you're gonna have three one tile. So that's n is equal to three. One n tile for three n tiles. I mean, one tile. All right, let's look at problem number six on page uh, 403. It says here, I'm thinking of a number. If you multiply by five and add three, the result is 23. What equation would you use to solve the problem? And what is the number? Okay, here you have to translate that sentence into an equation. We're thinking of a number, so we're gonna have to let n equal a number that we're thinking about or thinking of. Now it says in the second sentence, we're gonna translate that into an equation. We're multiplying it by five and we're gonna add three. And then the result will be 23. So it has to be this equation here. Five n plus three is equal to 23. We're taking that number, multiplying it by five, that's five n. Then we're gonna add three, that's plus three. The result is, that's the equal sign, 23. And then next we're gonna solve, that's the equation that we will use to solve for n. And what will be that number? Well, let's start by subtracting three on both sides of this equation. When we do that, you're gonna get five n equaling the 20. We still need to solve for n, we're multiplying by five, so we need to divide both sides by five to get n is equal to four. So the number that we're looking for is four. And again, you can do the check here by doing this. Take that four, if we multiply by five, you get 20 and then add three to it, you get 23. So that is the number that we are looking for, for this particular statement. Okay, so that will conclude this particular video on section 7.3 dealing with algebra tiles. Um, the homework for that will be available on web assignment for you to complete. Also, feel free to contact me by email if you have any questions about anything that's presented in this particular video.